Hi everyone, greetings from National Skills Network. In our partnership with Tata Strive, we have featured uh, many people who are from the leadership team at Tata Strive. But on the occasion of completing an important milestone in their journey, that's the completion of training and livelihood enablement of 1 million youth, which is a big milestone that Tata Strive has achieved recently. We would like to feature the key people who manage the centers, who lead people at the centers and achieve and do a lot to make everything work at the level of the center. So today we have with us Mr. Anurag Mishra, who's deputy manager at Tata Strive, and he's the head of Aligarh Center of Tata Strive. So welcome to this talk, Anurag. We are so glad to speak to you today to know more about how a typical skill development center is run. What are the challenges? It must be very tough for you, I know, managing so many things, multitasking, and trying to do all that you have to do to achieve the results to, you know, because you deal with people, you deal with youth, you deal with trainers and whole lot of people, mobilizers, industry people, and the government, and so on and so forth. So let's get started by asking you, how does it feel to reach this milestone and uh, what are some of the interesting things you want to share with us during this journey so far? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Madhuri, for uh, inviting me uh, in such wonderful uh, discussions and talking about our Tata Strive achieving one uh, million youth accomplishment. So it, I, I'm very happy to uh, tell you about reaching this milestone is always a, a kind of uh, thing which is very near to our heart. We all Tata Strive people try to complete this target. We have just, uh, it is just like a few years ago, we have started our journey. And right now we have, you know, 1 million youth is not a less number. If we talk, we talk about uh, uh, impact of this 4 million youth, 100% it is not limited to the 1 million. Suppose if there is one beneficiary and there, there are only four people in their home, so with the impact is larger than that that thing. So yeah. thank you so much, and it's a great feeling for us. Yeah, that's really true. Actually, when we say one million uh, youth are trained, it really impacts maybe four times more because the family is also uh, getting benefited by the training we impart and uh, going by the standards which Tata Strive has set in terms of quality, in terms of processes, it must have been quite a tough journey because it's not just the target or the numbers, right? So uh, let's go ahead and know more from you about uh, how does it feel to be the center head or the center manager, you know, in this role? And over the years, how has your role evolved, you know, along with the growth of the center? As a center manager, uh, we, we just know center manager accountable and responsible for all the activities, hmm. whatever um, going on in the center. And there are those few activities uh, as a skill development center we have, and that is being monitored uh, regularly. First thing, uh, what we need to say, uh, see that is the mobilization part. Hmm. Second one is the part where the training is continuation in, that is going happening in the classrooms. That is the second part. Third one, when the student has completed his training, now the turn is for the placements. That is the third part. And fourth part is after the placement. Only the placement is not the only criteria that you have given a job to the student, but you need to look at whether that student is continuing with that job or not. Right. So that is also a kind of the responsibility. We are not here to just providing the job opportunity to the learner. We are trying to give a sustainable livelihood to that learner. And Tata Strive is focusing on this, uh, this uh, matter Mm -hmm. or you can say this initiative from the very in, in the from the beginning of the time mm -hmm. so uh, being a center manager here we have a lot of the people who is working the colleague and you know people management is a little bit tough <laughs> <laughs> they have the issues they have the egos sometimes they that is the uh, main key area of the center manager mm -hmm. so Definitely as a center manager and recent couple of the years, the most important part was the safety. 
covid has started your first wave uh, wave second wave then third wave is the safety of the students the safety of the colleagues safety of the people who is coming to, uh, in the center who are going out from the center they are going for the ojts they are going for the jobs mm -hmm. so everything we need to keep in mind as a center manager yeah, yeah. So so that is the role <laughs> Yeah, so it's I think very challenging, and uh, I I'm sure it demands a lot of energy levels from you to keep everybody motivated, also, right? Because uh, you just mentioned COVID. I think we have gone through a everybody has gone through a tough time during COVID, and now that we have come out of it, uh, uh, maybe you can just reflect and give us a bit about how does your typical day look like? Is it like a CEO, you know, uh, running a company, or I mean, how does it look like? for you uh, from you know morning to evening or does it even end your day you know <laughs> thank you madri for uh, asking this question 100% in a day of a center manager there are many various activities where we need to look at hmm. so in the morning when i just uh, come to my office the first thing what i do i talk with my people in the morning meeting that it starts very beginning of the day what are the challenges what are the issues they have what we have discussed in the morning after that several meetings and reviews regarding the progress of the project is also been there and meanwhile when we complete our first half the second half is kept for the uh, some more tasks like if we have made a plan to go uh, in a village to do the mobilization that is the area second one is and when any student is refused to join any organization then we go to their home and try to counsel that student try to counsel help their parent that it is for their benefit just look at from not from uh, this point of the time just think about that after 5 years where you will be mm. so that is the another part of the area at the last in the evening what we try to do we try to do uh, what we have completed at the day and what is next we need to do for the next uh, morning mm -hmm. so every day the main thing what as a center manager i do i monitor all, all the activities what we have already planned to do that whether we have completed or not in this way our day to day life goes on yeah so let me pick up couple of interesting things you mentioned one is about mobilizing counseling convincing up to the level of the parents uh, maybe you can uh, relate it to aligarh and tell us more about what kind of a place what are the typical challenges perhaps from a place like aligarh uh, because you mentioned that you know sometimes maybe people are not convinced the parents are not convinced about sending their uh, children for a job outside aligarh right so there could be issues like that and like you rightly said attrition is an issue once they get a placement how do you make sure that they continue at least for some time so is there something you can tell us maybe an example or a typical case which you handled uh, during you know in the last one year or so uh yes uh, we we are at aligarh so here are the people who have a lot of the lands and they have a lot a lot of the lands uh, and uh, they don't have a regular income they are whatever they are getting from there that is from the agriculture to work okay so and the poverty is also here so when we go to the people and you know aligarh is a very small town hmm. we don't have a lot of the industries here where, where we can send our students after uh, the training so nearest place is delhi uh, gaziabad and these are the locations where we used to send our students Mm. most of the time it is very challenging for the girls and boys also mm. they are very new they have stayed here for the for, from a longer time for 20 years 21 years 22 years and they they always think about what will happen when i will move to the gaziabad or delhi so thus such kind of instances we uh, try to face i want to take one example uh, of one one our one of our girl named rachni that was a student of our ac and our technician batch so uh, in in our technical domains also we try to take girls so that we can give some uh, more uh, empowerment to the girls youth also in the technical domain also and we try to convince that girl we have met with the parents and you you will be glad to know what was their uh, what was her uh, joining place that was hyderabad okay <laughs> okay hyderabad is very far from aligarh but she went there 
she had a job there she had completed her uh, means first month second month she had got her first salary and she had called me sir i got my first salary for here i am very happy i am very uh, feeling I, now i can help my family also okay <laughs> yeah so what was the job role you mentioned anura uh we have uh, uh, at aligarh there are the five job roles right now ac and r and uh, solar assistant electrician abt just we have started and uh, bd business development executive so yeah. there are the five okay. job roles okay the job role which this girl took up uh, what was ac and r okay what does it stand for ac uh, air conditioning and refrigeration oh. Technician. Okay, that's right. Uh huh. That's uh, HVAC or something, right? That is yes, the yes. sector in which uh, it works. Yeah. So that's very interesting and motivating to know because definitely Aligarh is so far from Hyderabad. We are based out of Hyderabad, as I told you, and uh, it must be so difficult culturally as well, uh, you know, to get adjusted to a new place. But I think such inspiring stories is what motivates you, right? To get up every day and go to the center and you know take charge. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, so yeah. So besides this, you know, as a person who's the head of the center, how do you uh, upskill yourself, reskill yourself? Because uh, you must be, you know, having a lot of challenges. You just said it's uh, one to do with people management. Then second one, you have so many partnerships. You have to deal with the government, you know, the industry, and uh, you know maybe the head office people from your head office call you for things. So. how do you manage all this what is the kind of upskilling reskilling or continuous learning that you do to uh, keep yourself motivated and keep uh, doing well every day uh, of course it's a it's a kind of uh, there are the many stakeholders involved in this activity there are the internal stakeholders also and external stakeholders also mm. and uh, yes uh, before that i i want to say something about the tata stripe tata stripe has a very good training mechanism okay. when uh, our uh, covid has started that time we were uh, running all the batches in ilt form ilt form is instructor led training yeah. and every day students were uh, used to come at the center after they just go to their homes they need to visit every day when government has imposed that 100% lockdown will be there then we we had a you know a, what to do next now our organization has uh, thought and uh, they have given us very good model of the learning where the most of the part were where the uh, practical is not involved they can do at their home safely and with the help of some government uh, approvals and we try to give the practical trainings at our center in this in in, in this way we try to manage all the trainings and we Uh, all the students have uh, passed out and they have uh, provided uh, been provided as a work from home opportunities or safe with the safety guideline they can go in their uh, particular uh, job locations okay. so organization my organization has given me an ample of the opportunities ample of the resources ample of the things where i learned about the how to go for the how to deal with the such situations how to to deal with the covid situation how to i can uh, think about the safety of the students mm -hmm. so i got such uh, support from the organization that's really nice to know because without this support i'm sure you would have faced many difficulties and uh, you know would have been perhaps uh, too challenging for you to go ahead uh, so besides these points you just mentioned maybe if you go back and you know look at the other challenges of covid uh, how did it impact the students how did you manage that part of the thing because uh, you know when centers were closed students were being sent back homes and you had to bring them back was there uh, some something you know which you remember from there which must have been uh, which must have left an impact on you you know during those uh, tough months or days or weeks i want to share one uh, one batch story with you right now yeah that was ac and r 18 batch mm -hmm. and uh, as a uh, as a procedure as a batch uh, rotation we need to send them for the ojt on the job training mm -hmm. so they were in gurgaon that time when suddenly government has imposed uh, the lockdown and they were stuck there Okay. They have just completed 15 days of the OJT, and the OJT period was 30 days. Mm. And for for the 15 days, they were there. 
and the, we, I received a call from the students. And uh, he said, sir, what to do next? Government has stopped all the things. Now how to uh, move? And I got the calls from the, their parents and every, everyone. That time, uh, I realized only one thing what we can do, that is, uh, we can have the patience and we think about what are the solutions. So uh, in that COVID time, I have consulted with the government. I have informed about the students are there. And uh, the Haryana government has just uh, started their, uh, you know, uh, people moving from here, UP to Haryana and Haryana to UP. I try to reach reaching uh, to the people who are the responsible for this kind of journey. I have given the names, numbers of my students. Mm -hmm. And I have, uh, I have just said to students, don't go out. Just always wear the mask, use your sanitizers, everything guidelines. Mm -hmm. Because as a center manager, I was responsible to safety first. And second, they should land uh, safely at their home, uh, homes. Yeah. So that was the incident, which is uh, a kind of, you know, I never, I will never forget in my whole life. And that has given me, you have all the solutions at mm. your place. You need to look at that. Yeah. Every yeah. problem has a solution, but you need to be calm, patient. Just look at the situation and you will, you will have your solutions. Yeah. That is the thing. That, that is the key learning. That's a nice learning, I think, for all of us to hear from you, because I think what really matters when, you know, such things happen, when crisis comes is we start panicking, right, all of us, and we just don't understand what's available or what is not available. So it's very inspiring to hear this uh, small story from you, Anurag, about how you handled the situation. And uh, besides all these points that you shared with us so far, is there something you would like to share perhaps as best practices or as uh, some kind of guidance to people who are watching this conversation, who could be center heads, who could be in similar roles like you? Uh, I, I want to thank you for this opportunity, Madhuri. And I want to convey my some learnings what I have from my last few years. First yeah. thing, uh, just don't be a boss for your team members. This is your team who is always with you, whether the situation is difficult or it is easy. And uh, try to involve each team member in the discussion. Try to listen what are they are facing in their normal life. Try to be uh, a, a kind of uh, helping hand mm -hmm. if you are a center manager over there. Try to listen to the students what kind of the problem they are facing. Taking the feedbacks and giving the feedbacks is always an asset. So uh, being a leader will be a good thing for the center managers. If you are listening your team members, if you are talking about the issues, 100% it will be good for you because you cannot win a race. All, all, all we together can win the race and we, we can win the challenges. So that is only one message. Be a team player, don't uh, run alone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anurag. We look forward to be in touch with you and, uh, you know, keep ourselves updated about your center, which is doing so very well. And also thanks again and congratulations on reaching the milestone and being a part of Tata Stripe team. This is a big milestone, as I just told you in the beginning, impacting 1 million youth and which is multiplied, let's say, by four or three or whatever means a bigger number and with so much of quality, efficiency, and so on and so forth. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Thank you, Madhuri. Thank you so much. Thank you.